Welcome along to TTX, the E Grand Prix Zero Emission Electric Motorbike Racing. Coming up on today's programme, a full review of the 2012 campaigns here in Europe and, of course, over in the States. And the main focus of the programme is across the pond as we go to Daytona for the 2012 World Final. The 2011 North American Championship winners Bramo got off to a bad start at Infineon with rider Steve Atlas crashing out in practice. They got in Steve Rapp to deputise for him but he also crashed ending the Bramo weekend. It was Lightning who lived up to their name with Mike Barnes and Tim Hunt taking a win apiece in the two races. And they showed off with power wheelies and burnouts but they also had a DNF each so the overall weekend points went to Martin Schwark running on one of the Fort Zero S Superstock, E Superstock bikes. They won that award and led the overall championship. Some very close racing from the Zeros over the course of the season and that happened right from the word go in the double header at Infineon. Not on the bikes, not on the bikes and there it goes. Everyone get a nice spring on. The second TTX event of the year was the first round of the European Championship at Falkensberg Motorbana in Sweden. The Chinese Zong Shen riders staying with their bikes from 2011. Munch, meanwhile, have been developing a new motor. And in the end, it was the power of the Munch machine that was not really going to be threatened. Matthias Himmelman taking the win ahead of Ho Chi Fung and Tang Yu. Fourth place going to local man Peter Linden. That was good news for the fans here because he took on the role of race commentator whilst actually riding in the race, probably a first in motorcycle racing. Fifth place going to Stefan Bernstrom for 5R Racing, completing fourth and fifth for local riders here in Sweden. six weeks later we were off to Norfolk in Snetterton in England the 200 circuit the nearest in specification to the old Snet circuit after some redevelopment at the end of 2010 very wet race day as you can see guest riders Jeremy Hill rider liaison at BMCRC and Emma Franklin the lady racing journalist from Performance Bike Magazine both racing on Mavisons well the conditions favoured the local man Jeremy Hill he diced for the lead with Ho Chi Fung and Matthias Himmelman Jeremy looking really good, but Matthias was running tactically to avoid damaging the batteries. After Hills crashed there on the penultimate lap, Matthias followed Ho Chi Fung around until the last corner and he put the power down and managed to take the victory in Norfolk. That was round two of the European Championship. Event two, race three of the 2012 North American campaign, Portland, Oregon. Home of Motor Sizz, owned by Michael Sizz. Michael had two bikes at the track, having recently taken victory at the Isle of Man TT. But after qualifying, those bikes suffered overheating batteries and Mike withdrew, having set by far the fastest time, equivalent to gas 1,000cc machines. Steve Atlas was back on the bike, though. The Bramo rider taking the win. Matt Kent on the newly built Virginia Tech TTX 75 machine. He ran well. The E Superstock Award for the four zeros continued to provide very close racing. Something to drink in this. Yeah, yeah. That camera's legit. Laguna Seca, the next stop, the fourth round of the North American Championship. And the first of three races run jointly with the FIM. This round was run with MotoGP. And the first time since the Isle of Man in 2009 that Bramo decided to run two bikes. The second rider being a certain Eric Bostrom, or Ebos, as he was to become known. Michael Barnes for Lightning took the win here. Head of Steve Atlas with Ebos in third place.
Fourth place here went to European interloper double champion Matthias Himmelman. Head of Tom Montano on another lightning. And in sixth position, Katia Pernskun in the, on the second Munch racing machine. August meant we were back in the European Championship at Assen TT. That was in front of an incredible 60,000 motorsport fans, many of them having a first taste of electric bike racing. Song Shen running three here. Ho Chi Fung taking on the brand new 100 bhp AC power machine. The first time the bike had even turned the wheel, so it was development and racing at the same time. Although the team were taking it a little bit easy with a smaller battery pack and the power turned down ever so slightly. Zongshen only keep their bikes in Europe so they can't test at home in China. So it's very much remote racing and testing for them. Wayne Tessels, a local rider, took over the third Zongshen and showed Matthias and Tang Yu the way round for a few laps. But ultimately, Matthias was playing with them and again used the superior performance of the Munch to take an easy win. The penultimate round of the European Championship for 2012, Oschersleben in Germany. The second round run jointly with the FIM and the Munch team taking all three of their bikes to the circuit. Katja Ponsken racing, of course, with Matthias Himmelmann and the addition of engineer Thomas Schritt putting on his race leathers for the weekend. Peter Linden, of course, a keen supporter of TTX GP, took a guest ride on the third Song Shen bike. And there was a surprise win for Tang Yu and, and, and some other normally lower place riders standing on the podium after the three Munch bikes and the new Evo AC powered Song Shen all developed problems. First weekend in September saw the final round of the 2012 North American Championship. Miller Motorsports part of the venue, this time on the twistier East circuit. From the start, it was Ebos really getting into the stride of TTX racing on the Bramo. Steve Atlas, of course, not too far behind. Matt Kent on the Virginia Tech TTX 75 machine came third. And it was once again a very close four-way battle between those zero machines, very kindly supplied by... CTX veteran Kenyon Kluge. Jeremiah Johnson retired during this one with electrical issues. Steve Atlas's second place secured him the 2012 North American Championship, a successful defence of his 2011 crown. Ladies and gentlemen, we're seeing some smoke. Just a week after Miller, it was over to Le Mans, the 8th of September, a legendary motorcycling venue, and this was the last race of the year for the Europeans, again held jointly with the FIM. Lightning bought one of their machines over from America and kept themselves just in front of Matthias Himmelman, who rode well once again to secure his second championship in Europe on the bounce. Before we go to Daytona, though, let's take a look back at the ethos and some of the achievements of TTX GP since 2009. The TTX GP has been an adventure of a lifetime. It culminated in a single day where we changed history. You asked the question about challenges, and all I can see are fabulous opportunities for new sponsors, new drivers, new races, new equipment. It's just a marvellous world of opportunity that's opening up. It is an enormous satisfaction to design something, to put it on the motorbike and to see faster lap time 
it's as good as winning. Teams, engineers, riders, spectators, all coming together and making a step and changing the world. Motorsport is competitive and it's, there's a constant arm race going on. It's a, a technological freedom frenzy, effectively. And when the electric bikes start beating the petrol bikes, then I really think the dawn of a new era is with us. It's important to meet head to head with the incumbents and with They have to be competitive with internal combustion machines. This weekend will prove that. Get to the finish line first. Track screen. We go in and we talk to supply chain subcontractors. Often they already know who we are. People who we sell motors and drivetrains see what we've done in the racing organization, and, and there's a credibility that comes with competition.